uh, welcome uh, once again to our weekly drop-in session. For this week's session, we're looking at as is versus to be. Um, so this is a topic that we covered about 12 months ago on the drop-in session. And it's a topic that comes up from time to time. But one of the main reasons we brought it up this month was, uh, I think last month, we've had a, a number of new clients going through onboarding and it's a really, really common question that, that comes up. So we always start with the sort of training people how to get up and running mapping processes in SCORE as the first step. And almost immediately that question arises saying, well, should we be mapping the as is or should we be jumping straight into a, a 2B process? So what we're going to do is try and uh, try and address that uh, question and then just show a couple of examples of, a, of an as is and, and to be because I've got something very, very simple to share. Just I'm just going to dive into a little bit about as is and, and to be processes, because on one of the sessions I was on very recently, there was a debate about the as is versus the to, to be and, and only towards the end did a number of the participants put their hands up and say they didn't really know what we were talking about and so it's important to sort of address that first of all and then we'll have we'll, we'll explore a little bit of a discussion about um, essentially where do you start like do you need to start with an as is or can you jump straight to the 2b so we'll have a bit of a discussion an ex exploration of that and then as I said we'll dive into a bit of a a simple example on here. So um, let's start with what we mean by as is and to be processes. So I've actually got three definitions in here because I, I think there is a third, a sort of middle way that comes up often when I'm doing this or when we're involved in this uh, doing capturing processes. But basically the, what we mean by an as is process is we're talking about trying to capture what the the process as it is today at least in theory we're trying to capture the what what happens today but that's often more difficult than it might to seem hence why we have this third way which i'll come back to in a second but that's the the, the basics of it is we want to understand what the process is how the process works today and really all of all the phrases the, the warts and all so we want to know everything that's wrong with the process as it is today as well uh, as well as you know what it ac actually is all the problems the pains we uh, know about as well so essentially we're trying to paint a picture of the current state which is another way of describing it the current state so it's all about what exists today Whereas the 2 B is all about the future, so where we uh, where we want to get to with our processes, and 2 B processes, you can actually end up having multiple 2 B processes, especially if you're involved in, say, a multi-stage rollout program, where um, if this is linked to a systems implementation, for example, you might be rolling the system out in stages, and therefore you you're running both your kind of old legacy process with your new process or parts of your new process at the same time so you might actually design multiple 2b's you know for for each stage in the in the project so it's all about what what the future looks like how do we want the process to work tomorrow basically uh, so I mentioned current state as another term describing as is. So often with 2B, we talk about the future state is again another phrase that gets used regularly to, to describe this. But other things that are often associated with your 2B process, process design. You know, process design becomes quite important because you've got to really think about uh, once you understand the problems in the as is, as I mentioned before, you, you're often thinking about well, how do we overcome those problems? And the problems might be, benefits reversed if you like so it, it, you know you might have a specific problem in a process where you're losing time or losing money but actually you might just decide that you want to do a process better than it's done today maybe that's to improve customer experience that sort of thing so it's understanding both what the problems and the opportunities are and the as is and then designing them into a into a future state a, another uh, area that the, the term to be or future state gets used a lot or process design even is around this idea of a, a target operating model. So that's where you're taking a holistic approach to looking at 
how an organization or part of an organization, roles, responsibilities, the processes and everything, the systems that, that fit together to, to deliver some sort of strategic change or transformation. But in basic terms, we're talk, when we talk about a 2B process, we're talking about the future process. What's it going to look like in the future? So the, the third way that I added on here, which is the I, what I call the as is plus um, or the I've heard I heard someone recently call it as is extra. And that's basically when when you go to try and capture the as is process. But what happens today is maybe very unstructured or it's everyone does it in a slightly different way. And so you basically have to make a decision at that point. If you go in saying, I'm going to map the as is process, and this is often one of the reasons why there's resistance to doing it. If you're going to go in and map the as is process and you're not fully aware that there's actually all of this variation that happens, that, that exists, then it can be very, very time consuming. And so you need to make a, a, a bit of a decision if that situation arises. Um, are you going to try and map all of the different variants of that as is? And in some cases that might be uh, important to do, but I'd, I'd suggest probably not so important. What I tend to recommend when that situation comes up is we say, right, let's let's assume that what we're going to what we're going to do is, is create a baseline at this point and we are going to say let's agree without changing the process too much let's agree how it should be done today so not how it's actually being done but how it should be being done and then capture or make note of uh, those variants or the pro the different problems and so on o often what you find is actually great improvement opportunities in this exercise because while you might have two different people doing the same process in different ways by bringing them to together to try and capture a what's the best way to do it they all then share their story so one person will say well i do it this way because it's faster or it produces a better outcome and the next person in the room might do something else differently for the same reasons it, it, they found a quicker better way of doing it so it's actually it's a really really good chance for everyone to come together and often people will walk out the room going well i'm going to do it the way he does it because or she does it because you know i can see i understand it's a, it's a better way of doing it so you actually end up sort of developing a new process if you like it you it's not quite a 2B because you've agreed that's what it's going to be today from the minute you walk out of the room. And hence why we sort of call it this as is plus, because it's not really what has been happening, but it's what should be happening for the time being. And you're not always doing this to, with the goal of creating a 2B in future. So for, if you're capturing processes around, a, again, I use the systems implementation or systems change program, and you're going in to capture the baseline, the as-is process, um, as part of a future implementation, then you are inevitably going to go and create a 2B process to be able to go and design what that future system is going to look like. Uh, but it might be that you're actually the, the project that you're doing is a standardization project. And all this is about is making sure we've documented all the what we do today and document it in a stand, standardized way. So the goal is to just capture the best practices that we do. And so your as is plus might be the sort of end goal of what, of what you're capturing. So those are the key things, just a very, very quick summary. So as is is all about trying to capture what happens today or understand the process today. Two B's about capturing or designing a, a, a future process and we, we i use the phrase as is plus plus because often when we try to capture it as is process there's lots of as is processes and we've got to make this decision about what we do with that let's then just talk a little bit about where do you start and this this again is an in, it can be a very very interesting de debate and just to kind of bring a bit of color to the debate um, there's a couple of couple of a couple of data points that I went and checked before coming on this session today. So the, the first of, first of these is um, we have a blog on our website called As Is Versus Two B, and when I did in, I did some quick analysis over the last three years. So from basically from the beginning of twenty. That page on our website is the second most popular page on our website. So our, our 
homepage accounts for 15 percent of the traffic to our web as you'd expect the as is versus to be article is the second most popular page on the website at eight percent and the next most popular page is is around how to run process workshops and that comes in at four percent and then roughly everything out or, or all the next 10 articles all kind of sit about two percent of the traffic so you can see it's a really really popular topic and that's that's all organic traffic from people searching so it's obviously a very popular thing for people to look up the other data point that I've found quite fascinating is I look back over my LinkedIn post because I remember remembered posting about this topic a few years ago. And again, when I looked at that, it was one of my most popular posts. And I posted the question, should we bother mapping as is process? And I have probably had one of the, mo the highest number of comments I've ever had on a single post, which is over over 130 comments. Um, so it's quite a discussion. So it's quite a topic that that people get quite passionate about. So let's have a quick look at uh, where, which, when, where, and why you should use each of these. Now, my primary instinct is always to is to always go and get an, an as is, and the main reason for me is that it's and hence why I've put a map. Uh, image in the in in the document here is because help you, you really need to understand where you are so you can understand or work out the route to get to where you want to get to um, and also to be able to understand the progress that you're making against that goal so if you were to be dropped blindly into a city street somewhere and be told that you need to get to the cathedral or wherever it's you're basically going to be walking around randomly up and down streets until such time that you recognize the cathedral or whatever it is you randomly bump into it so it's not it's not a perfect analogy but it 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 does work um so this is more it's it's not about a a kind of um a dogmatic yeah i always do this or i always do the other i always do an as is or i, I just don't bother and jump straight to be it's situational so contextual it'll depend on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve so some simple rules of thumb to help you decide whether whether you should start with one or the other is starting with the as is there if there is no as is and by that i mean if there's no as is process documented so there is a process happening today but it hasn't been documented uh, at that point now again some people might will argue well you know we're going to change the process so we don't really need to think about what happens today we'll just go ahead and design what what's new but actually the rest of the points that i've got under as is it's very difficult to know whether you've got them unless you've gone and, and looked at the as is and, and capturing the as is is a great way to identify those. So you might have a good idea about what the problems are, why you're going to go straight to a 2B, but how confident are you that you really understand them and you really understand the root cause? So again, mapping that as is just it, it's a sense check so you might be right but again there might, there might be something missing and if you don't capture that or capture as much of that as possible you could be run into problems when you do your 2b or certainly when you try to implement and roll it out uh, same with missing important requirements it's just about making you know, double checking you've got all of that information um, but I think the last point under as is, is is perhaps one of the most important in my in my uh, view anyway and that's even if you do understand the current problems and even if you've already got an as this process document but actually sit with the stakeholders to review it or work with the stakeholders to create it if it doesn't exist what that will do is it it gets it gives them the chance to be able to talk about the challenges and the problems that they face and it also helps them to understand why the change is taking place in the first place and so it, you know by them understanding the problems they'll understand the need for change and so you're more, much more likely to get higher levels of buy-in so you know if for no other reason it's valuable just to, to for that to get that buy-in from stakeholders early to make them feel like they're part of this change and and you know to to have a a, a stake in the game and help to roll that change out so th those are the kind of key reasons for me to think about there are however times when i've worked on projects where we haven't 
bothered with an as is and we've gone well it's not st strictly too but we we haven't perhaps documented as is process and there's a there's a number of reasons for that first and foremost predominantly for me it's when it's when it's a completely new process so no process exists there isn't an as is that to, that exists today to go and do it and that's probably the main one there are times when um the as is process is already well documented and understood the impact of the change is quite small it's not going to affect many people and yeah we can just go ahead and jump straight into designing the 2b um, or again if the process is going to be radically different from what it is today and it, when i say radically different i'm really talking about it's a completely new process so you know you're you're going to be doing a completely different thing in a completely different place with a completely different set of people so you know that that need for the buy in maybe isn't as as important as it was was before but really that's just a completely new process so to me those are the main reasons why i do that but i i would uh say that in most cases i still find that doing some sort of as is work to investigate what's happening today and the problems is incredible is, is incredibly valuable and uh, really i think essential um, because even where i've worked, where we've gone straight to the 2b process mapping because it's a completely new process we've still done some sort of analysis and research to understand what are the issues and what why is it that we're doing this process at this time? So hopefully there's a few little pointers there that just kind of give you an idea about when you when you should do one rather than the other. And say my preference is always to do some sort of as is investigation, first of all, because it's just it's always been valuable uh, and it's always been worth the time. So what I'm going to do now is quickly uh, show you a simple example of uh, an as is and, and to be process just to try and just to bring it to life, really. So what I've got here, th there's, a, there's a couple of ways of doing this in school, but my preferred way is to be quite descriptive. So here you'll see I've got a process called process invoices and then I've called it process invoices as is. So I've called it out very, very clearly and you'll see in a second on my other tab, I've got the same process, but it's the 2B version of it. And I like to do it that way in, in this instance. So in this use case that I'll take you through, I found it quite valuable to do it. Often if you're making, um, you know, if you're, if you're as is process is the process and that's the process you're doing today there's no need to call the two out um you know you're going to design your 2b process you can do it all in the same process at the same time uh, that's especially useful if it's continuous improvement or in incremental improvement means that you're making to the process over time then you don't really need two processes but in this case what I, what we're doing here is again using the example of a, a systems change or systems implementation and so what the reason i've created two different processes is because i want to tell a story so i want to go back to the the business of the organization and explain look this this is what we're doing today this is what we're going to change and why we're going to change it and so here you know captured a typical as is process this one is the same in uh, processing invoices coming in so we've got importing the invoice we pair that to the purchase order it, there's a decision point where it either goes to a finance admin for approval or uh, or a finance manager for approval and in each of the detailed views here there's a few steps so we've got invoices coming in by email or invoices coming in as a hard copy that need to be scanned they're manually being entered into the into an accounting system and then uploaded. And what we've done here is having captured the process, had a discussion, we've then said, do you know what? These steps are going to be really easy to automate. We can automate this review one with a bit of OCR and, and a bit of AI to read the invoice as it comes in, but that's a little bit more complicated. So straight away, what I'm doing is being able to then communicate with the, the team to say, look, we recommend that you automate these things, but if you need to make a decision about when and how much you know these green ones are the ones we're going to do that, that are really easy for us to do whereas the orange ones are a little bit more complicated or do, difficult for us to for us to do so that allows us to tell that that story then what i what i've done is i've basically made a copy of that process 
renamed it to process invoices 2b and then this time i've been able to to basically redesign the process with with the changes taking into consideration the system that we're implementing so in this case this is you well, the idea is to demonstrate how using a bit of robotic process automation to potentially do this so here you've got the uh, invoice coming in by email and and now there's no people involved you'll see there's one one less box on this diagram there's no people involved it's only systems so it's automatically taking that in reading that information in and entering it into the system and so i can then clearly compare the two side by side using the two different tabs as i said to tell that story about the difference between what happens today and what we're proposing we're going to do in the future the the other thing I've done in this example uh, is also to include quantification information. So I'm not going to go into um, the details of how that worked, but we've included quantification information on each of the steps in the process. And again, that allows us to do a side by side comparison of the two processes. So in this case, oh, let me go and do the costs one. So in this case, we're saying that we do um, uh, 200. 200 invoices per week so we can look at the cost of that with the as is process and then the same if i go and look open up the 2b and then it shows me the the difference so here the, the quantify will always carry the same uh, simulation numbers that we set and so for the same number 200 invoices per week over a year and we can then very very quickly see look today's process costs 162,000 versus proposed 88,000 in the new process so then you can start to make decisions about um, the cost and, and impl implementation of that project so we hope you all have a lovely summer and uh, look forward to catching up um, afterwards mm -hmm.